I'll go back a little bit of history. So prior to the internet, there were a million reasons that entertainment had to be fragmented geographically. Yeah. Right? You had to run wires, you had to, the satellite didn't cover the signal. There were a million reasons. And what happened is uh, the people who got to those territories first, the frontier, you know, the, the, the real frontiersmen who got to those areas first in paid television are, are now the moguls because they, you know, because what happened is that because they got there first, they've created these huge monopolies around uh, access to programming and access to content for consumers. And because there were big monopolies, they didn't innovate very well. They didn't have any reason to. Um, with the internet, there's no reason for it to be physically, for, phys phys for distribution to be physically fragmented or geographically fragmented in any way. So there is no first to market because we're all there. We're all getting there, right? So now the real differentiation is going to be the speed of innovation, the quality of the programming, the, the technical, you know, does, the, does this product work? In China, there's a, the companion to TikTok is called Douyin, and that service had a massive amount of commerce happening on it, both live streaming and asynchronous e-commerce opportunities. Why is that? It's because uh, the dynamics and the trust and the energy that is created between a brand or influencer and their followers is quite remarkably strong, especially if it's a very authentic connection. Mm. Within that dynamic, it's very easy to sell products and very easy to conclude e-commerce transactions. It's going to happen more in the West. It's happened a lot in China already in the East. Uh, so I think if you, if you kind of combine this social media storytelling with traditional film and TV content with uh, e-commerce opportunities that I just described, that's a flywheel that can be, that is a very modern footprint for a media company, and that's our thesis. There is so much conversation about what, you know, how central the consumer is, and it almost seems as if when we go back from here, we leave the consumer at APOS, yeah. and uh, start doing the things that we want to do. And coming from a content background, the only understanding that I had was, that if you keep the consumer at the center, you know, the guy who consumes that piece of video and align it to the, to the larger aspirations of either the, the individual or the society, right. then you have a much better chance of getting it to work. And once you've got, you know, once you've fixed your content piece, then rest of it becomes relatively easier. Uh, our hypothesis, I think all strategy comes with a hypothesis on how right. we want to build a business and what we believe the next future is going to be. And we truly believe that making a Korean show, uh, we really need to make sure we prioritize our audiences in Korea mm -hmm. and creating a very locally authentic show. So Korea is a market. Korea, Japan, India, a lot of our APAC markets, countries, they love local content, a good quality local content. And making authentically local shows that's really going to appeal to our audiences in that market will event, and when they meet with a platform like us where we have the global distribution, it will find audiences outside of that home country. Asia for YouTube is a market that has um, three of our top 10 consumption countries in aggregate, which is amazing. Uh, it's growing twice as fast as our global average. It's another amazing statistic, both in usage as well as in revenue. And there's a tremendously vibrant local creative community that we're tapping into. So for us, it's an incredibly exciting market that we're doing a lot of, uh, a lot of activities in. And uh, so I made this into a longer two-week trip. Um, our closest experience would be Bolivia or Peru or Mexico, uh, where we've maintained our, our global pricing mm. and we've built such great content uh, that it becomes a must-have purchase. And, you know, if you look at other high-end goods like the iPhone or things, they're, they're quite expensive. And in comparison to all those, we're quite inexpensive. Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll see year by year how that goes. But at least as an initial cut, um, our goal is to build a great service at a pretty consistent global price and that pretty consistent, amazing content behind that. Um, and we'll see how that works. We're, we're a learning machine, and to the degree that something doesn't work in one market, we'll adjust and figure that out. But as a starting point, um, that's where we are. Yeah. In, in the last three years, while well, we haven't met physically, um, definitely we saw um, the industry right, for, for streaming businesses mature a lot. Um, very rapidly. Right. Um, in fact, uh, I mean, echoing a lot of what, what Joe said before, while um, I agree that the industry is maturing, I don't agree that Asia in particular is reaching a mature market status. We're still seeing a lot of growth um, in various markets. Um, uh, us alone, uh, I mean, your projections 
for both AVOD and SVOD are you know, between 19 to 24%. We've certainly seen um, our growth in excess of, of that. So what's encouraging is not just about the number of titles, but we look at a couple parameters. The watch duration is still also very healthy from the subscription. But most importantly, we pay close attention to what we call the subscription contribution. What is the first content that they watch after they complete the transaction payment? Mm. And in the past, if you look at the top 10, all the top 10 are basically sports. But now we can see consistently the worst week will be three, but the good week will be six. So between three to six out of top 10 are actually coming from the video originals. So this is something that is very encouraging. And again, from the consumption, uh, taking your research scan that uh, out of the Southeast Asia, if there are top 10 local stream content, so video actually dominate four out of the top 10. So that's show how important local content are in our ecosystem. Um, I think the future of our aggregation is that slowly uh, the market moves towards the aggregation of KO and Venge under a new aggregated brand name, but it wouldn't be, it won't look and feel anything like pay TV. Right. It will be more the packages, um, well, firstly, consumers want complete freedom, be able to come and go as they wish with, with whatever their streaming is, there probably will be bundles. I mean, the common sense and the research says everyone wants things in one, in one place. They want to be able to find everything, so see it all converged. They want to be able to turn things on and off in one place, so a, a proper marketplace, and they want more value. Hmm. Because the more streaming services there are, the more strain there'll be on wallets. You know what, actually a funny thing is happening in India um, is that you know when streaming arrived, uh, streaming arrived and introduced the world to binging, right? As in all episodes drop at one go and you watch it, um, which is great and everyone loved it and they like watched it on Friday and finished it by Saturday and all done and asking us when season two. Um, but what's also happening in India is because of the way the market is, uh, Indians are you know, extremely sort of you know price conscious and value conscious. Um, so they very quickly consume everything that's available and then you know, churn out of the subscription yeah. and wait for other things to come up later. And then they come back. Uh, our global role, I think, we've really, in fact, uh, Bruce Mann and I were talking about it out, out there in the audience, yeah. is that you know, the, the saying goes that nobody ever loses money uh, during a gold rush when you're the guy selling shovels. Right. And that really is uh, our global strategy, is that we're, we're investing heavily in content creation, in IP, in writing talent, not just in the US, but throughout Europe and increasingly in India and the rest of Southeast Asia. So as we kind of cast our eye on you know, video industry revenues across the region as an Asia Pacific aggregate, you know, effectively MPA is saying that the total video industry in terms of revenues are gonna grow at almost 5% every year for the next five years to reach more than $154 billion. And online services um, are going to contribute more than a third to total video industry revenues over the next five years, versus 18% today. Now, excluding China, the region grows a little bit less, around 4% every year to $84 billion. But even excluding China, it's coming up to shape. Online's upward climb will be significant in Asia X China as online video revenues in the region grow double from 10 to more than 20, 15% growth and 25% contribution to the industry.